The 88th Texas Legislature is nearing the finish line. Over 10,000 bills were filed this session, and many are making their way through the chambers to keep Texas and America the freest places on earth. With so many important bills moving in the process, we here at TPPF invite Texas legislators to come by and explain some of their important bills. This is The Layout. I'm Celine Rodriguez, Assistant Director of Federal Affairs here at TPPF. Today we are joined by Representative Travis Clardy to talk to us about his bill, House Bill 4081. House Bill 4081 is an effort to better equip Texas counties that have lower budgets and fewer resources to address the challenges associated with border security. Representative Clardy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Celine. Great to be here. So to kick this off, first I want to ask you if you could please explain to us what this bill does. Absolutely. Well, House Bill uh, 4081 is the border judge bill, uh, and it's an important bill because of the problems we continue to, to suffer at the border. Uh, we have a federal government that's unwilling to do its job to secure our borders and protect our sovereignty. And thank goodness the, the folks of Texas, and I serve with the Texas legislature and the governor, have taken steps to secure our border and protect what's going on. But what we've done through Operation Lone Star, and I'm sure you're familiar with that, is, is begin to prosecute cases under state law uh, and move away from a, a federal jurisdiction where we can uh, con uh, prosecute people for uh, criminal trespass. So where they've gone, gone across private lands without permission, that's a, technically a, a trespass. So they're being apprehended and they're being prosecuted under state law. But to do that, we still have uh, equal protection under the law. We still have due process concerns. And so what this b uh, bill will do, allow our border counties uh, to better afford the, the horde of, of uh, humanity that's uh, showing up at our border, processing through our courts in an expeditious way, but a fair way, a legal way. Uh, so this allows us, our county uh, counties on the border, their commissioner's court to request that the state reimburse them for expenses related to having visiting judges, associate judges come and, and uh, dispense of those cases. Great. Sounds like a great bill. I think it is. Why did you find the need for this type of legislation? Uh, we've all, uh, most of the members have taken trips down to the border, and I want to assure the the, the, the viewers of this program, uh, this is not a made-up issue. This is very real, and you go down there and you see uh, the stress that it's putting on our local governments, our local counties. Uh, you know, we are all having our troopers go down and serve time on the border. Our National Guardsmen are down there. Uh, it's been an all-hands-on-deck approach, and we're putting the resources behind it to secure Texas' border. If the federal government's not going to do it, I can assure you Texas will. Uh, and so uh, part of the process has been uh, to, to figure out ways that we provide support in a meaningful way and in a financial way to allow these, these uh, counties to continue to function. Because these counties, like every other county, they still have daily business to do, counties to run, things to administer, uh, other courts and dockets to handle. What we want to do is, is provide that, that complimentary service, uh, let the state defray those expenses, not have the burdens borne by these small counties like uh, uh, Jim Hogg or Maverick or Kenny County or examples. So if a commissioner's court chooses to, they can request uh, from the uh, uh, Texas judicial system uh, uh, reimbursement for those expenses. We don't want them to feel like they can't handle the caseload and they're stuck with these cases and the dockets drag out and then Operation Lone Star doesn't work out as, as well as we have envisioned. Right, and I think that's something people tend to forget as vital as Operation Lone Star is, especially from a law enforcement perspective these courts still have their regular operating cases that they have to do. So this sounds really great. Thank That's you. That's right. Um, you said this bill allows counties to request reimbursement for visiting judge salaries, and it states that the funding is going to come from money allocated for the purpose of border security. Right. So what would happen if there is no or if there is limited funding available? Well, uh, if there's limited or no funding available, uh, then that existing, those existing judges who are on the bench, our district court judges, uh, the smaller counties typically don't have county courts at law. Uh, if they can't afford to bring visiting judges, then you're just going to have a backlog, and, and that will that will build up, and it will affect other people's right to have an opportunity for a trial by jury, to have their cases heard. And I'm just talking about their their business cases, their other cases, the other mm -hmm. criminal dockets. So uh, you know, we believe in in the United States and, and in Texas that we need to have a, a consistent uh, and fair judicial system. And part of that is we have a right to a speedy trial under our Constitution. So you can't have that if everything's backlogged. It also puts an inordinate 
burden upon our local jails and holding facilities. Uh, we've seen this. I'm sure everybody's seen the news stories of our, our uh, the detention centers along the border and how overcrowded they are. So we have to have a way of processing these cases uh, and then work towards uh, uh, you know, having the hearings, having the due process, having these cases adjudicated. Uh, and I think all of our desires are that, that those folks that aren't here legally, that have not complied with our uh, uh, immigration laws, have not sought the appropriate uh, protections of seeking asylum, uh, and that certainly those that have uh, committed crimes are allowed to stay in our country. You know, I, th I think we are a nation of immigrants, and we we uh, we, we hold that dear. Uh, but I think we have a very reasonable expectation, and to my view, a duty uh, to ourselves and to, to our posterity uh, that we protect the shores and the borders of the state of Texas and the United States of America. And if somebody doesn't want to come here and uh, comply with our law and come here legally uh, and show up and when they're here, follow the laws and leave when they're supposed to, uh, then we need to act in our best interest uh, and, and secure that border and enforce our immigration laws. Absolutely. So it sounds like what you're saying is this will not only be effectful for uh, effect, effective for border security, uh, sorry, sorry um, but also help with a more orderly immigration system for our state to be able to accept those law-abiding citizens that want to come over the right way. I, I think so. And again, folks present at the border and they're seeking asylum. There are rules in place. You know, we just had Chapter 42, uh, the, the federal chapter that that's, uh, uh, goes back to the, the Trump presidency. Uh, that has uh, expired this week. And we saw a huge crush of, of, of folks coming to the border trying to get across. Uh, I've been very pleased to see the reports of uh, our troopers and our National Guardsmen really being more uh, uh, proactive and being, uh, I'm going to say the word aggressive, but I think being being firm uh, and, and defending our shores and resisting people is to walk across unfettered and then across the, the farms and the ranches in South Texas going to wherever they're going to go without any documentation of who they are. I think it's absolutely imperative to, to protect our sovereignty that we know who comes in our country, why they're here, uh, and, and the purpose of it, and that we insist upon them following the same laws we expect our citizens to follow. Right. So we're a friendly, welcoming people. Uh, you know, that's our te that's where Texas comes from, Tejas. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's friends. Uh, but uh, if you want to be our friend, come follow our laws. Right. And uh, final question, sir, just mm -hmm. going back to what you said about Title 42, since it did expire last week and we did see a bit of a surge uh, right leading up to its expiration, do you believe that Operation Lone Star will see another rise in the trespass cases and um, how will your bill help these smaller counties to take on those cases? I hope that we will not, uh, but we have seen an ebb and flow. Uh, there's always been in the history of our, uh, you know, little geographical oddity, but Mexico has always been our neighbor to the south, and they are currently, and they will continue to be in the in the future. The difference is, once upon a time, uh, when I when I was much younger, your age, Celine, uh, there was seasonal migration of of workers back and forth from northern Mexico. That has changed dramatically with the advent and, and the, the the power that's being asserted by the cartels and the border, how they've taken over uh, a running uh, a, a groups through into our country uh, illegally and without papers. And so, you know, we've had to change what we do. Uh, the, these are not the, the, the traditional uh, back and forth of border trade. They are, you know, Mexico is our largest border uh, the trading partner. And so we've had historically good relationship. There's been bad times, good times. But this bill, I think what this allows us to do uh, is we can better monitor, better track, uh, better uh, uh, identify, and when necessary, prosecute those people for violating laws in Texas. And, and that you know, there are other cases that are not just trespass cases. Uh, there are, you know, you talk to people that live on the border, and they will tell you stories how they quit locking their doors because they're tired of replacing doors and locks and bolts. Uh, they they you know, they don't secure their properties because they're going to be vandalized and torn up. This is new. This was not the way it was 20 years ago. You talk to anybody down there, we're in a different environment. So uh, there can be prosecutions for things, not just for physically trespassing, walking across a property, but for, for theft, for uh, uh, violent crimes, for destruction of property. So all those uh, need to be, be uh, prosecuted, uh, but we've got to have the resources to do it. And these counties just don't. They're, they're like the counties I represent in East Texas. They're small rural counties. Uh, great people, uh, but they've been overwhelmed by the volume of people that have come across our border. And so I think it's incumbent upon all of Texas to help our, our Texas counties to the south uh, match 
kids up with these burdens and, and be able to help them with it. So let's bring in resources like we have with our troopers, with the guardsmen. Let's do that on the judicial system as well. And so I think this is a very valuable bill, and I hope that our commissioners' uh, courts in South Texas and our border counties will avail themselves of this, make their request, because we've put money aside for it. Uh, this is a, it's an acute need, and we want them to know they're not alone, that the, the, the responsibility and duty and challenge of protecting our border is not just for the border counties, it's for all of Texas. That's excellent, sir. We want to thank you so much for introducing this legislation and for joining us here on The Layout today. Thank you, Selena. I want to thank our, our friends at the Texas Public Policy Foundation for working with us on this bill and providing uh, outstanding resources and support in moving this legislation forward. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you sir.